Cheers! Welcome to Movie Bitches! So 235! Tonight, well not we, April's reviewing it too. I just always want to say like it too. Brutus. Like it too. <laughs> oh my god. It's too bad. Too bad this wasn't episode 227. I mean it doesn't matter, but every 27 years. Pennywise comes back from mm. from the gutter. We'll get into it. Okay, so it's a it's a first things first. Yes. Shout, Shout out, out to, one. to Andrew, our mixologist. <laughs> we decided we need some bigger guns to get April through the oh. task at hand. Oh, it was, so, it's a task. So, it is. Yeah. So, oh, but but first and foremost. Oh yeah yeah. Subscribe. Yes, share. Yes, comment. Did yeah. you like this movie? Do you like the miniseries? We can all agree that Tim Curry is the best. Take your pick. Billy boy. So here's the thing. I literally know nothing about it except for that there's a clown that lives in a gutter and balloons and... Yeah. It's not in the movie. Mm, but there's like, is the weird creepy laugh thing in the movie? In the so like, far that <laughs> That's what it sounded like. Hello. In so far that that he's a clown who laughs? Yeah. But there isn't like a laugh. It's not like his signature like Oh no. Oh, was that Pennywise's laugh? Oh no. Oh, that no. doesn't that's not a thing. So there's a lot to unpack. Yes. Oh right, but so I know literally nothing about So that's it. That's, that's it. the extent of yep. your knowledge. Uh, basically what happened was I remember God, I was in elementary school. And someone was like, oh my god, we watched It. It was the scariest movie I've ever seen. And I was like, oh no. Then I will avoid it. That's not something for me. And I have fully just avoided it at all costs ever since. I remember walking by the miniseries. Uh, it was a blockbuster. And it was two tapes long because it was so long. And I remember always walking by it because it had such a great cast. Mm. It was like John Ritter and... Oh, well, now I'm forgetting. But John Ritter was there and Tim Curry and... Really, just Tim Curry. But anyway, I remember walking by it all the time because it would be like a spooky clown. Yeah. And then there was all their squares on the bottom of like, and all of these people. It was like a Dracula mm. cover or something. Uh, and I always went, oh, oh, scary. No, no, no. Oh, that's that movie that people tell me is scary. Go back and rewatch it. It is not scary. My handling. Did I have to go? Did I have to get cleaned up? For a kid, I guess. For a kid, yes. Fully. For the kid in the 90s, yes. So we gotta unpack that. Sure. We gotta unpack the book. We yep. gotta unpack the first It movie. Right. And then It too. Sure. So I'll try and, try and slam cut through it. Yeah, because I mean, in all honesty, I just don't care. I don't care, but I gotta, I gotta give you some context. Yes. So the book, an 800 page... <gasps> <laughs> untenable, cocaine-fueled, semi-masterpiece that... <laughs> I don't know anyone that's actually finished the book. 800 pages? What is this, Moby goddamn dick? I don't think Moby dick's that long! <laughs> Probably not! So, it is every idea that Stephen King has ever had in a book oh boy. that's mostly interesting and also Sort of a disaster. Okay. Um, so now, have it, you read part of it or no? Okay. But I have friends, and they've told me bits and pieces, so right. I can give you some flavor. The creature, yes, isn't always a clown. He can transform into anything. He is now. Get okay. Hold on now. Some sort of galactic or cosmic or things like that entity, an ancient, and there is a. Not a lot of this is in the movie. I'll be honest. Okay. There is a cosmic ancient. Turtle? Oh. That? <laughs> Why? I really wish there had been more turtle in this movie. That is the antithesis of it. Uh, it's good. Oh. And, um, and they, it was prophesized and there's a lot of Native American rituals and ancientness and the rites of and how we have to, anyway. How come the good one is forced to be a turtle but the bad one can be anything? No, no I don't have the answer for that. <laughs> I don't 
have a lot of the details, but there is a mythical turtle. You can only be a turtle. You can be whatever you the want. The answer is cocaine. Okay. The answer will always be cocaine. <laughs> that is the answer. And it landed on Earth Okay. Um, forever ago. And every 27 years, it rises back up to power and... Like a cicada. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And feeds... Now, this is my understanding of it. And feeds on the fears and the evilness of humans. The more he scares people, mm -hmm. the more delicious they are, the more he wants to then... The more power. And it, and it all grows. So it all takes place in the... Wasn't that the plot of a movie that we watched recently? Where it was like, the, the more fear, the more powerful I am. I don't know. Doesn't Whatever. Matter. I guess Doesn't it's matter. a common theme. Okay, great. Sure. Sorry. I do feel like, though, there was something else that we watched recently where it was like, ooh, I feed off of fear. That gives me my strength to grow. I mean, it's a pretty common, Yeah. you know. Was it Power Rangers? That <laughs> <laughs> no, she had to collect all the gold. Oh, right. That was gold. Really, the main character, you could say, is the town of Derry, where it right. takes place. And... For me, and what I understand of people that have read the book, the scariest part of the book is the evilness of, of humanity. Mm -hmm. And that it's seeped into this town. And so when kids or people are doing evil things, no one's standing up and saying, hey, that's, you, should, you shouldn't do that. As an adult, I should protect you. You're a child. Things like that. And the, the inherent racism and the inherent homophobia, of all this stuff and all this hate and intolerance, is built in generationally into this town because Pennywise is feeding on it down below mm. and it's this self-perpetuating thing. And, and so the scariest part of the book and the movie for me is not the clown being like, oh, spooky, no. spooky I'm a clown. Ah! You it's know, society. It's, oh, and then that very sad thing happened and no one did anything. No one, in the, and that's what's so scary. Right. And so the most effective scenes in this as well as the first one are those scenes. You have to be very carefully taught. So, so we'll get into why this may have been a comedy. Okay. We'll get into it. Okay. So, so in the book, it flashes back and forth. It's them as kids, okay, dealing with traumas in real life. Pennywise. The other thing is, adults can't see Pennywise, so they'll be like, "Can't you see this evil thing that's happening?" And they're like, "What are you talking about? I don't care." So, uh, in the book, it flashes back and forth. We're kids. And now we're adults and we're telling the story back forth and we're filling in all these blanks. The first movie, just the kids. Right. They decided to just do the kids story and then they were going to do the adult story later, which is what they did with the miniseries. Okay. The Tim Curry one. Sure. The camp, I mean, this movie could have used some camp. Kiss me, fat boy. <laughs> the first one, that's basically what happens. They're kids. They band together. We're the Losers Club. There's seven of them. It's oh, too, many. too many. Is it any wonder the book is 800 pages? I just have to say, seven main characters is too many. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Particularly when five of them are white boys. As I said recently, if you can't make an open table reservation for everyone, it's too many. <laughs> well, is it, goes, it goes to six? Sometimes it's six, sometimes it's eight. So that one's on the cusp. It's on the cusp. That's, that's for like a group outing. I'm talking, like in a book, I think it's much lower. <laughs> And each of them is dealing with their own uh, traumas and situations uh, within the town. And they're trying to strive to be better. And they're the losers club. They all are unpopular. So they all kind of band together. And in empowering each other and confidence and, and we're not afraid of you anymore, they essentially defeat Pennywise in the first movie by saying, you don't scare me anymore. You don't hold any power over me. And he's like, oh no. And he's like, oh no. And then he falls down a hole. And then he goes, fear. And then he's like, blah, 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 and it was like really stupid. I laughed really hard. <laughs> so I was like, what is this? So. Fear. But anyway, so that's essentially what happens in the first one. Okay, and then it's like now 27 years now, later. 27 years later, we're catching back up with the Losers Club. They're all grown adults. Sure. And they have to come back to Derry. They've all left except for one for Mike. So how old were they in the first one? 12. Okay, okay, okay. In in and around. Okay, so that works, that works. I mean, I'm sure there's variations on how old. I'm just trying to think, like, because like, I'm like, with James McAvoy, how old are we supposed to be? No, but he, he that's fine. It's, I mean, the first problem is, this movie's almost three hours long. <gasps> that's right, I remember now, when I was like, no, I don't want to see it with you, Eve. I'm sorry, I'm cool. And then we looked up the runtime, and I was like, mm, I made the right choice. So I went into this movie 
with low expectations because I liked the first one. All of the scenes with the kids getting together, all of the scenes of the town being terrible were all very effective. And then this clown kept showing up to ruin the kind of sad drama that I was watching and I was like, get out of here, clown. Shoot. Because they would just be, Woo! clown. Like it was just, it was, it was like, you could, you could literally time it. It would be like, and it's been about 15 minutes since there's been a jump scare with the clown. And three, two, one, go. Okay, great. <laughs> So for the most part, I enjoyed the first one. Okay. It was fine. It wasn't crazy long. It was still probably too long. Um, so I had low expectations because I heard this wasn't very good. Okay. <laughs> it turns out it's true. But uh, I heard that it was like, yeah, it's fine, whatever. Uh, and it started, and I'll be honest, the first 45 minutes, I was like, what are people talking about? That seems pretty good. So it starts, and my understanding is this is also literally exactly how the book starts, which is interesting. Yeah. Two, it's at a carnival, there's um, two men, they kiss. I was like, hey, first scene of the movie, into this. They're having a fun time at the carnival, they're in Derry. Oh, this is my hometown, you know, I hate it, but you know, we're back here because of whatever reasons, blah, mm -hmm. blah. They're showing affection in this open space and these horrible homophobic assholes beat them up and murder one of them. Oh and it's terrifying, and it's effective, and it's upsetting, and it was the only part of the movie that did that. So people are saying like, oh, it's homophobic, like the movie's homophobic and da da da, and I was like, I don't think so. I mean, there's problems with Bill Hader's character, we'll talk about it. But this to me was such an effective scene where I was so upset, and it was the reason the book is scary. And yes, the clown is there to, to be sort of Feed off stoking of this fire, but, um, but it was really upsetting and well done. And I was like, oh, why is everyone complaining about this movie being stupid? Right, because it was, and, and, then, then, and, then, and then, then it got very stupid. No matter how many stupid poems you write. It also didn't help that the guy who's being beat up is named Adrian. Okay. And so his boyfriend keeps saying, Adrian! Adrian! Like Rocky, you know. Adrian! <laughs> There was like, you've never seen Rocky? Well, you know that he's like, Adrian! Yeah, I guess so. Adrian! Adrian, yo! Adrian! You know, that's like a thing. Sure, yeah. So there was like, I, I was horrified. But there was like a 5% of me that was like, <laughs> Adrian. Oh no, I'm so upset. <laughs> so it was, but Mixed. that's in the book, so I, I can't be, you know. Sure, right, that was just. That's cocaine's fault, so it's fine. <laughs> I would almost say, I mean, it's upsetting, so don't, but like, the opening scene is one of the most upsetting, like, like I was like, what am I watching? You know, Mississippi burning? Or like, it was like, I mean, it sounds intense. It and... sounded like, it was like the opening of a John Grisham novel where you're like, oh, and then there was the trial for Adrian's murder and the systemic racism and homophobia of like a small town. You know, it was just like, whew. But then the clown showed up. <laughs> the clown showed up. And don't get me wrong, I can find clowns to be scary. Clowns in real life, because I question the human behind the clown, right? Sure. This, it's sort of this mythical clown, you know, like that's like unbelievably right. magical. Right. When it's just like a, you've made a life choice to be a clown. I just have questions. If the answers are right, I'll trust you. But if not, I feel like it's a no. Yeah, I mean, I guess I've never really understood clowns. As I, a fear or as a... Both. As like an art form. Both. Okay. I've never understood clowns as a fear, partially because my friend, when I was 11 years old or whatever, right. was like, oh my god, I saw this crazy movie and I'm so scared of clowns now. And I was like, cool, well, what's that? It's probably its fault. I, I mean, mean, like, historically, I think, like... I think historically, like, why there's a fear of clowns is because of it. This movie seems to think clowns are a lot scarier than I do. Sure. And I guess what I would say is, I don't necessarily think this movie's for me. I think this movie's for teenagers who want to make out and have jump scares and then like, you that know. That sounds about right. But then oh, who's making out? Oh, no. oh God, I yeah. think it's that. Teddy! Teddy! Mm. Oh. Teddy! Teddy! 
Oh, Sandy. But who's making out to like a movie where a, a gay guy just got beat up for being gay and this murdered? This is the cocaine. This is the problem with it. It's very there's so and the space turtle and the this and the, like it's it's a lot like it's a lot of things. It's so wait, there is things. a space turtle. Not in, in this movie. There oh. is like a little cheeky turtle figure, Reen and um, Mike, sort of the um, historian of the group who stayed in Derry and, oh. and knows about the ritual and how mm. we have to. He was the only one that stayed that was like, I have to be the. The tor carry the torch and whatever. He, I mean, he's also not the best actor, and he has a lot of lines that are like the ancient ritual of the con the nonsense, nonsense. And then there's like flashbacks, and they do peyote. It's a lot. But it doesn't know. I know what I know. What do you know? How to kill the shit out. Of I've read every book. I've I talked to every person in this godforsaken town. Oh, um, boy. but they showed like a little turtle thing, and I was like, oh yeah, it's turtle time. I'm so excited. <laughs> and then it. <laughs> It's turtle time! Now, do we think that the inspiration for Kim Joy's uh, galactic turtle dessert on Bake Off was from It, the book? I surely hope so. <laughs> so the, big, the biggest problem with this movie is there's no plot, there's Ooh. no pacing, there's too many main characters, and it's not scary. So that, that's the biggest problem. Yeah. <laughs> Six different things. So yeah, so that scene happens and it's, ah! oh my god, it's horrifying, it's really scary. They throw him off a bridge, oh, he has Jesus. asthma. Like there's a lot of details that were clearly drawn directly from the book and it's so upsetting. And then it's his perspective and you see the water and it's like he sees the clown and he doesn't see the clown and he sees the clown and you're like, ooh, that's spooky. You know, cause like from yeah. afar, yeah. why is there a clown Wait, on Wait, so the clown murders him? So he, is essentially dead. Like he's been, like he's, he is in a state of complete um, fear and shock and I've been beaten and mm. I've been thrown and I'm in a state of dying. Sure. And the clown shows up. The rules of the clown aren't clear and don't get used to it. Like it's not gonna work out. Okay. Like the, it's the, the accounting is not gonna, you know, come out clean at the end. <laughs> but, so yes, he, oh, the clown, oh my oh, gosh, yeah. and his, Boyfriend runs down to the side of the river and he's like, hey, Adrian, again, Adrian. Adrian! It wasn't funny. And, um, and the clown, now in the book, apparently, it says something to the effect of, and in the shadows, he seemed to see, like, a, a, a clown and it was feasting on him. Right? That's oh, scary, right? Sure. You're like, oh, that's spooky. Why is there a clown that's feasting on him? Oh, my. In the movie, he's like, Adrian! Again, not funny. And the clown is like holding him up and then he's like, Hum! and then he gets like 800 teeth and he's like, Hum! and he like literally like bites his chest and it's, every time the movie's about to be scary, uh, ooh, what's the, oh, it got stupid. Adrian. Like, it right. does, it, that's too far. It it's goes too far. Sure, much. sure. The budget, I mean, the CGI. Oh my God, there's so much to talk about. Oh my God, Andrew, okay. I mean, I'm sorry, I just have to. Ask me questions, let's well, do it. Well, no, it's just in my head. I was just picturing, because it's like the gay couple too. Yeah. This is really inappropriate since it's sad and he died. I mean, it's this movie, but you know, it was just like, and then it cuts to him feasting on him and it's just like the clown, just like. <laughs> no, that would have been interesting. <laughs> You didn't even have to say anything. It was just, yeah. <laughs> hey, Adrian. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, sorry, sorry. So the budget. So I was like, bam, slap in the face. Fuck. That yeah. was oh, scary. Rough. Yeah. Rough. Maybe this movie. Maybe the reason people don't like this movie is because it was actually good and scary. Right. And not just and you the like, clown <laughs> being like, ah. And then I was like, oh uh, no. No. So anyway. It, so it's 27 years later, We then we have to introduce all the characters. So then it's like, and here's this person, and this is what they're doing, and we're going to give you like maybe a minute and a half to two minutes to re-get to know uh, this like, person. This is what I'm up to now, That uh, 27 years after we were friends. Also, there's so many characters, and um, they did their best to sort of um, face match, like, oh, that was that sure, one. Sure, sure. But it took me a while to... Be like, wait now, James McAvoy was 
Who? Which one now? No, no. So I mean, but that's kind of crazy. Even if you think about it, like, if you only spend two minutes on each person, that's fifteen if. minutes of this movie, and that's not a lot of time to spend introducing a character and For what they've been up to. For a movie that's nearly three hours, yeah. I mean, wow. So yeah, they do a terrible job of introducing everyone. It's just very much like he's a writer now. He sells real estate. Like, it's mostly job-based. So we introduced James McAvoy first. And there's a really bizarre cameo from Peter Bogdanovich. I mean, I wasn't mad at it. I as know. The director on set for the movie. No, no, no. A, a yeah. cameo as... The director on the set. So James oh. McAvoy is a writer now. Uh, and he's also a screenwriter. And he's, he's writing one of his books into a screenplay. And uh, his wife is the actress in the movie and apparently she has a much bigger part in the book and she's literally like in this scene for five seconds so he's like i can't write the ending goes to set and then peter bogdanovich comes down on a crane and is just like well hello you should rewrite that ending i'm peter bogdanovich i mean he doesn't say i'm peter bogdanovich but he is wearing his his um uniformed ascot and i mean it's just it's just peter it's very weird that's very weird like, this horror movie, I, mean, I just watched this horrific... Right. Hey, what's up? I'm Peter McDonald. It was weird. I mean, it was... And I'm sure, like, who, like who's watching... I don't know. This movie was wild. Now, who watching this movie other than me is like, Hey, oh, Peter McDonald. Right. Hey, cool. Good news. Not even, like, John Carpenter. <laughs> you know, like, I guess they were friends. He was there on the day. Introduced James McAvoy. Uh, and then we introduce um, three more people. And then we introduce Jessica Chastain. Oh, she's in this. Yeah. So. Oh, I think I knew that. There's a girl in the group. Okay. There's a black man in the group. And then there's, wait now, five, five white, white men. boys. Or men, men. <laughs> boys to men. <laughs> if only. I think mean, I, would, I would love it. So they introduce Jessica Chastain. She has a horribly abusive husband. Oh, great. Um, and it, it, her journey is, is sort of because her father was abusive in the first movie, so it's sort of this sort of cycle, Break out cycle, of, the cycle. of abuse, right? And it was actually affecting and upsetting. He, like, beats her up and is about to rape her. And oh, then God. she, like, hits him over the head with something and just, like, escapes the house. In the her dad room. or the husband? The husband. Okay. And apparently, I'm going to keep saying this, but apparently in the book, her husband is, like, a main character and he is um, chasing after them the whole movie and is a horrible person and it's a nightmare and he is trying to kill them all like because they're all coming back to Derry and mm. he's coming after her and he's a psycho got you and he's not we never see him again he's literally in the first scene she hits him over the head and is like bye bitch never, I hate you never to be seen interesting again. yeah oh because it's just so bad okay because what happens is at the start of every two-minute introduction to the character it's like Suicide Squad oh my god it's Mike who stayed in town calling all of them saying, you got to come back to Derry for this reason, Pennywise is back. And they've all forgotten because there's like a thing where if you leave Derry, sure. you like, it makes you forget. So you can't remember. Tell anyone or whatever. Well, well, there's a whole thing where you like, you forget. And, and the whole movie is them like remembering their traumas and mm, coming back to miserable. it. It was pretty rough. We haven't gotten to the worst part yet. Okay. So anyway, so yeah. Um, oh, it's Mike. You have to come. Oh, oh it's Mike. You gotta... Mike, you gotta come. Oh, hey, um, I haven't talked to you. Oh, the phone's ringing. It's Maine again. Oh, hey. Uh, just in a row. Oh, Dairy, Maine. Is that where it is? Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Just in a row. That's annoying. Just. That's really bad. That's bad filmmaking. Yeah. And we meet Bill Hader. He grew right. up to be a stand-up comedian. We'll get into the Bill Haderness of it all. He was simultaneously the best part of the movie, but also was like the sort like stood out sure, the most. Sure, sure. Like, like he was the most fun, so people are liking him the most. Right. But also, it didn't fit. Right. For me. Right. Tone is important. Well, fuck you. All right. Just be careful, dude. Fuck you. I'm not afraid of you. Like he wasn't bad. It was just. It, it's just. It's not a very good film. Um. <laughs> so quick commercial break. <laughs> we'll be back with more clowns. We'll be back with more clowning. So they've all come back to Maine. Oh, except one of them because he killed himself. Forgot oh, about Jesus. that part. So there were eight? You no, know, there were seven. Oh, and now there's only six. So, so, I don't mean to laugh, but it was just handled with such non-care. One of them gets the call from Mike. Mm -hmm. uh, you gotta come back to Derry. Okay, yeah, I'll be back. And he, this was spooky too. He just 
Um, oh, in the movie he commits suicide. Yeah, in the book too. But like, but like. Well, so he just. It's not like oh, I we called up Joey, but he wasn't around because he committed suicide five years ago because he was so tra traumatized no. and never forgot anyone. Hey, Mike. It's nice to hear from you. Oh, what? I have to come back to Derry? Yeah, I'll be there tomorrow. Click. Walks into the bathroom, starts a bath, slits his wrist. <sighs> this movie sounds terrible. Was, I am so glad. I didn't you. See it. The whole time I was watching, I was like, Andrew would have left. Oh yeah. Andrew would hate this. Yeah. Andrew would be miserable. Yeah. Yeah. I also could have left, was miserable, and hated it, but I stuck it out to see what happened. So they all come back, except for Stanley, who has killed himself, and they meet at uh, this Chinese food restaurant, and they're all joking around, having good times. Oh, hey, remember when we were friends? Oh, I'm remembering things from the past. Oh, oh what do you mean? And Really traumatic things. They don't yet. Oh. And again, it was like clockwork, how much it would be like, that's spooky, now it's hilarious. So they all have to, um, they, they have a whole meal, they've joked around, da, da, da. they open the fortune cookies for the end, and they each have one word on them. Wow. And it's like, guess, it, Stanley couldn't, like it's all these, and they're trying to like... Ooh, guess Stanley couldn't make it? That's... And it was upsetting, and you're like, oh no, because the Stanley part is, they held, hold back until the very end. Sure. So it's like, they keep thinking it is it. Right. So they'll be like, it, guessed, couldn't make, what are we trying to, mm, uh, uh, and they can't find it, and then, then guess Stanley couldn't make it. And they're all like, <gasps> and it's really upsetting. And then a fortune cookie opens up and a stupid CGI eyeball baby bat sort of monstrosity thing is like, Bleh! and I laugh really hard. Whoa, whoa. It's like, oh, the subtlety of a, of a word puzzle and a message from, now that's, ooh, that's eerie. Yeah. It's like a Ouija board, but, but then <gasps> there's some sort of bat eyeball baby thing crying <laughs> that looks terrible, by the way. It's like a really bad CGI, and it's just like, Aah! and they're all like, Aah! and then there's like black goo, and then there's oh, like a, no. an eyeball and a finger, like, and they're all like, Aah! And they're all like, ah, whatever, and then it's all like in their head, it was all like... Right. Uh, and everyone at the restaurant's like, these people are crazy. <laughs> now you would think that. Okay. Because it's logical, it makes sense. They seem to be in a private room with a dome of silence. Of course. Because smashing a chair oh over the Lazy Susan where the bib is and the eyeballs and, the, and he's like, fuck you or whatever. And just the hostess comes in and she's like, um, is everything okay? And then they're like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. And then she's not like, you'll have to pay for that <laughs> adult man who just broke our chair and table. Like, there's no discussion. And she's just like, okay, I'll get the bell. <laughs> Alright? Yeah, can we get the check? <laughs> this is just added it automatically. <laughs> this is, I'll get the bill. <laughs> Three hundred dollars for that chair. Like, it was so weird. It That's was really so, weird. Like, the, and you could chalk it up, I guess, to like, well, it's a weird town. It's Derry, but like, it didn't make sense. Yeah, no, that's weird. I'm honestly surprised I wasn't shushed in the theater. I, that, I'm, I was laughing so hard and so often. <laughs> I mean, I know you, so yeah. I'm surprised too. I was, I was really trying to keep you together, but I mean, it was, <laughs> and again, it was like clockwork. Like every <laughs> fifteen to twenty minutes, there hasn't been a very stupid CGI <laughs> scare in a while. <laughs> And it, and it and it got me every time. Right. That, it wasn't okay. like, ugh. So in some ways, it was enjoyable. No. Oh, okay. I mean, it was. I did laugh. I wouldn't watch it. Because sure. I wouldn't recommend it at all. But like, I laughed. I mean, okay. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's true. Like, you kind of either want one movie or another. You can't yeah. try and have both. Where it's like, ooh, serious, scary, dramatic things. Yeah. And then also, ooh. Silly, goofy CGI, like well, and it gets oogie boogie. It gets dumber, and and the tones like it felt like Monster Squad, but but in my understanding, like it is supposed to be like one of the scariest books slash movie. Like it's marketed as a horror film. Yes. So I'm like, why am I watching Monster Squad starring all of these Oscar winners? Right. Right. I couldn't tell you. Yeah. That's what's weird. That's like, what's weird. Huh? 
So then they're leaving. Oh, this was one of the best parts. So they're leaving the restaurant, and this little kid, I don't know, 10 something, walks up to Bill Hader and he starts to say some weird sort of out of place line, right? And you're like, oh, spooky kid, that's weird. And they've all, of course, been very upset by the black goo. And um, the, the uh, outrageous bill they obviously had to pay for breaking the chairs and various different things. Um, and he's like, what? And then he at, like yells at the kid's face, fuck you! <laughs> and I laughed so hard. And then it turns out the kid was just quoting a stand-up routine to him. Oh. Fuck you! I'm not afraid of you! The fun's just beginning. The line from your act. You want a picture? I think I'm good. He was like, oh, sorry, do you want an autograph? And the kid was like, no, I'm cool, thanks. He like, walks away. And <laughs> no, like, you're a crazy asshole. It was like such a weird thing to be in there. Because the kid comes up later, James McAvoy also yells at that kid and is like, don't go in the sewer, dude, fucking listen to me, listen to me. Like, he's like, it's very dramatic. And he's like, never go in the sewer. Tell your parents to get out of dairy. Like, he traumatizes the, the same child. You leave dairy and you stay out of dairy. Do you understand me? supposed to be at the festival. Tell me you understand! And then, also, what kid's gonna be like, I'm gonna go to the sewer? Because the clown enticed the That's why. Um, because in the first movie, his younger brother, James McAvoy's younger brother, is the one that gets taken oh, and killed. So it's sad. sad. He's traumatized. And he has like guilt about not being there sure. to save his brother. Although, wouldn't he then also get lured into the sewer and they both would die? One might say. <laughs> but Andrew, childhood trauma. Oh, I thought you were going to say, but Andrew, cocaine. Also cocaine. <laughs> now, what's the thing with the red balloon? So that's um, sort of like an indication that it is near, um. that Pennywise is near. They don't really utilize it very much in this. It's, it's much more from my memory in the miniseries, where it would be like, oh no. And then they'll pop and there's blood in them, and it's like, <gasps> um, this one, here and there they use it. But okay. not really, but that's what it is. Gotcha. So the Chinese restaurant, they're here, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Then um, they're all like, we're going to leave. We're not going to stay. We're going to get killed by Pennywise. So this is the stupidest thing that the movie decided to do. Okay, good. Well, that's not true, but it's one of them. <laughs> so they, uh, you know, we're not going to do it. Okay, we will. Well, we're going to. It's like, who cares? Just just fight the clown. Mike, the historian guy who yes, stayed in Derry. Yes, yes, Just has a whole monologue where he's like, well, you see... We all have to split apart. <laughs> we each have to go. Like, they, they literally say, we all have to break up and go on our own side adventure. Where I mean, it was clearly we didn't have the money to have them all in the room for the whole movie. Oh, yeah, I love it. It was so bad. Yeah, because you have to have a cast of fucking seven. Of, like, Oscar winners. Oscar winners. I'm a fucking Oscar winner. Yes, you are. Well, actually, I don't know if any of them have won Oscars, but they've certainly been nominated. Nominated. Yeah. So he literally is like, we have to split up because the script tells us to, and we each have to go on our own adventure where we each go find an old talisman that represents a trauma from our childhood so we can remember the trauma of our childhood so we can remember Pennywise so that we can then go defeat him. We need to split up. You each need to find your artifact. Alone. That's important. <laughs> so for, I'm gonna say an hour of the middle of the movie, it is literally James McAvoy goes to find his talisman. Jessica Chastain goes to find her talisman. Bill Hader goes, it, it literally goes through every no. single person. Hey, that's you gotta come like, to the Hey, you gotta come to dinner. I mean, it was like Suicide Squad. Oh my God. And I was like, I mean, this is insanity. This is not filmmaking. No. This is nonsense. Yeah. This is. That's terrible. Insane. Yeah. Would it shock you to have me tell you that um, after they each have an individual one, some of them have a second one? Why? This is when it just felt like I was watching the same vignette over and over. So like, it's like Jessica Chastain, uh, this was in the trailer where it's like creepy lady. Do they at least montage it? No. That's like literally the point of a montage. <clears throat> yep. Oh, different people are all doing da, the da, same da, thing? Da, 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 no, because it has to be, and then it was 50, okay, the timer's running out, the clown hasn't shown up. Three, two... Oh, right, exactly. So, so this was in the trailer. The Jessica Chastain, oh, I'm in my old apartment when I was Oh, kid. yeah, this is, oh, the old lady. Creepy lady. So creepy, right? Yeah. She was creepy. Frozen lady. Frozen lady? Remember, she's like, she's like, nobody leaves dairy. 
alive. Right. Like she's right. creepy, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Subtlety. Yeah. Oh, what's going on here? That seems creepy weird. She's in the apartment where her father has died. Ooh. He abused her. That whole storyline. It doesn't really make sense why Bev would be, a, like, why her fear would be an old woman because men have always been... Oh, is that what it's supposed to be? It's like your your fear or your whatever triggered you and your... I guess they're saying that the, like, apartment she grew up in triggered her. I don't know. But why is the old woman... She, like, lives there now. Okay. Which would make sense were it not for the end of the scene I'm about to tell you. So okay. it's, like, creepy. Weird music's playing. Oh, I'm just gonna go make some tea. Leaves. She goes and finds her talisman. It's just, like, check. And what is it? And check. It's a key from before. Oh, no, wait. hers was a poem that one of the other guys had written her that made her feel special, but she forgot which one of them wrote it to her because of dairy. So it was either James McAvoy or the other one. Um, and they couldn't just talk about it? They all forgot. Oh. And she wrote it down and hid it under a he floorboard gave it to or her. something? He gave it He was like, I wrote this for you back uh -huh. then. And she hid it in a floorboard and then... <laughs> like, it's literally... Okay, great. And then uh, in the background, there's a darkened hall, and you just kind of see like a creepy thing pass by. Oh, that was creepy. What was that? Oh my gosh. A booga booga giant, crazy, CGI, five mouthed, troll looking, naked, giant lady with troll hair. She had troll hair. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Are you afraid of the dark? Like oh, it yes. looked stupid. That's what it sounds like. And I, I just couldn't wrap my head around it. Okay, let's get into it. Okay. So Bill Hader is in this movie, not in the book, a repressed homosexual. Oh. Who was in love with forget his name, not Stanley. Okay. Or James McAvoy. Okay. The other one. The other white boy that didn't kill himself, but wasn't the one that used to be fat that lost weight. Okay. There's so many characters. He's the one that's all fussy OCD. Of course, gay. No, no, no. That's oh. the one he has a crush well, on. Hater is the gay. Well, but that's why he thinks, because you know that coded for gay. Oh, maybe I have a chance. <laughs> so it's just sort of like there a little bit. Uh-huh. And um, it doesn't really go anywhere. It didn't really have a purpose. And he never comes out it. or or he kind of is very upset. Um later when something happens to the, the one that he liked. Mm. But there is no conclusion to it. There is no, it's okay, and I I rose above. It sure. seems like he's go somewhat gonna just keep living this repressed life. Maybe, it seemed like an afterthought. Like, okay. Oh, maybe he's bisexual and he had a crush on this boy. Eh, I don't know what they were trying to say, and that's the problem. But it's like throughout kind of sprinkled and you're like, I guess. So anyway, so he comes back to his trauma. Oh boy. Which is, they all, you know, call him a fag in the arcade and he's like, oh no, and it was sad, and it was sad. And then he walks out into a very brightly lit open field. It's the middle of the day. There's a giant Paul Bunyan statue in the town. And then Pennywise is on his shoulder like, hey, I'm Pennywise. I'm just a clown sitting on this giant Paul Bunyan statue. Yeah. Great. Hey, what's up? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna basically out you. Like he's he, that's his that's his, his fear, fear, right? So he's like kind of, but it's like very. Does he have like a fucking bullhorn? I know your secret, your dirty little secret. I know your secret. It was weird. So the the weird thing, there there are no townspeople really. Okay. It seems to be. Um, it's the seven main, well, four, six main characters, because Stanley killed himself. Yeah. And they'll go to a place, and there will be a townsperson who is spooky, like, and turns into a creepy thing. But there's no, like, flavor of the town. There's no townspeople. There's no... Are there ever other people? Or do we think that this could be, like, some weird, like... I mean, know, it could all be a dream. Hellscape Yeah, dream. they're all stuck in... It's, it's lost. They never left dairy. Right. Or there is no dairy, and it's just... They're riding on the back of a cosmic turtle. Yeah, they, they nailed it. Have you been taking cocaine? 
I put a little in the punch. Okay, great, 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 great. So, I have a spooky cloud, and then there, in this scene, there are townspeople that are just behind it, but they oh, seem okay. to be frozen like mannequins. And then, well, because they're a figment of the imagination. Exactly. I mean, I like this. And then the Paul Bunyan statue comes to life and is looks stupid and it's evil and it chases him. Oh. In my head, I was just thinking, like, it would be scarier, like it would still be it. stupid, he but like, if, like, the Paul Bunyan statue like, hey, was, like, Bunyan. sexy, but then all of a sudden, like, got crazy and then sodomized him and killed him. Now that would be scary and good! <laughs> right? I would His like that. His fear came to life and murdered him. Yeah, no, I would have liked that. No, it was just like, bomb, bomb, CGI giant Paul Bunyan. In that scary movie? I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna... And then how does he escape? It's always like, um, oh, I realized it was, it was just Pennywise. It's just fake, it's Pennywise. Yeah, so like, it, on top of it not being scary, you're constantly like, well, this is... And this is fake. Well, this is stupid. And the other thing that sucks is like, Pennywise never, he's like, impotent, like he never... Uh, he can't like, do anything He can't then. do anything. Like in the first one, yeah, he does kill the younger brother. And well, I guess he did kill, oh, right, sad. And, the, and he killed the I gay guess, guy in the lake, in the river. Inadvertently, like it's weird. The rules don't make sense. I thought you said he ate him. Yeah, well, yeah, he did eat him, but like he didn't. Like they killed him first. Sure. Yeah, it, mm. It's better when it's like pairing, like hand in hand. But they're also, oh my god, there's so much to fucking talk about. So they're also, um, because they wanted to bank on these kids that everyone liked from the first one. There's also flashbacks. No. So the flashback of him being in the arcade, instead of sort of a poignant, I'm an adult. But I'm imagining the kids that made fun of me, right. and I'm stronger for it now. But I had a moment of the ooh, though, no, that right. that was upsetting. No, I'm an adult. I can Move overcome this. this. Yeah. It yeah. was no. We'll show the kids them, and then anyway. Um, I, I do like the sodomizing Paul Bunyan idea, though. I mean, I'm into it. Take and, like, their fears. Blue the and... ox is just like watching. <laughs> It'd be weird, I would, but it would be I fucked would, up. And I, like, I would like it to get fucked up and weird. It's not. So there's a middle hour where it, I mean, it is just. That sounds rough. The same, the same scene over and over, coupled with yes. So they do flashbacks to the. What kids. was his talisman, Bill Hader's? Um, a token. I like that you actually care. I mean, um, like a token from the arcade. Like, hey, that's stupid. Yeah, because some of them, it was like. Oh, I left this here as a memory. Like hers was like, I put this in the wall because of reasons. Right. His was like, well, but like you didn't, you didn't like put that token in a special spot. And how did they know? It was all nonsense. None of this is in the book, by the way. None of the talismans. Oh, we gotta break up and go on our separate adventures. Stop it. Not really, and Wait, not in this way. Avril. Yeah. You have an eight hundred page book you're adapting, and you're gonna make up more shit. Yeah. Yeah, that's what my friends who read the book said. They were just like, why? Why? There's so much in the book that, like, could, why? What? Give me Galactic Turtles. I mean, uh, tell me about it. Tell me about it, Stan. I would have loved that. <laughs> and the sodomizing. Such a <laughs> I'm really, really here for that. I'm so glad. <laughs> it's much more interesting than what happened. <laughs> I love that this is just like a, it's turned into a weird gay horror movie where it's just like, and then the clown ate him out and drowned him. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then they the Paul Bunyan statue. It's like, they died of pleasure. It's like very, it was like, what is this, cruising? Or something? It's like, oh no, 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 no. It's, and that would be interesting. It'd be interesting. Upsetting, but interesting. <laughs> I, do, I do like the phrase, and then the clown ate him out and killed him. So quick commercial break. <laughs> we'll be back with more clown. We'll be back with more clowning. The clowning has begun. <laughs> oh my god, right. So then they do these flashbacks to the kids, right? But it's been two years since oh no, they filmed puberty. the movie. Now you'd think, okay, whatever, we can just accept that these kids have aged. No, they spent God knows how much money no. de-aging no. these children and their voices. <gasps> oh, what a stupid choice. Why not just don't have the fucking flashback? Yeah. Oh, because your movie doesn't need to be three hours long when you already have an entire two hour plus movie of the kids from two years ago? Who gives a shit? If anything, just use a flashback to the movie. Yeah, and they did use some scenes that were like 
uh, cut from the first one. Oh. Which I was like, well, it wasn't good enough for, for the first, first one. one. But also then that? that's really weird because then you're cutting between footage of yeah. the kids two years ago I and mean, now the kids now. I don't now. even want to know how much stupid money they spent oh on that. God. It's like just watching money burn. Burn. Because I didn't know this going in. I looked it up right. later. But I was just like, huh. They look odd. <laughs> like it was, it was, it was just. An uncanny valley enough that I was like, hmm. And then some of their voices sounded like, like, like they they sped it up to like one ten. And I was like, oh, that's weird. And I was like, well, it's a flashback, so like maybe it's the fantasy. But then I just kept being like, this is, wait, like it was, it really threw me for a loop. Oh, that's hmm. that's such a weird choice. It's such a weird choice. That's the problem with shit like this, yeah. is that you, you get these people where it's like, oh sure, we'll give you the budget, whatever you want. No. No. Small budgets create creativity. Yeah. You have to refine and decide, you have to put in whatever is really... smart choices. Exactly. What's really worth telling the best story. Do we need to spend $80 million de-aging these children? No. no. You can tell a better story and cut 30 fucking minutes out of the runtime. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and say an hour. Well, sure. The hour middle. I was like, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> They're going to go through all six of them, are they? Oh, they are. Oh, God. Really? I guess it was a good thing Stanley couldn't make it. <laughs> oh! Shit. I'm just heartless. I guess maybe because I didn't see it that I just don't care. The movie didn't care. It was what? like, and then, I mean, it was like, oh, that's sad. Yeah, but... that's upsetting. Oh, who cares? <laughs> <laughs>
so incredibly wrong. And so it doesn't help that knowing that, I'm watching the movie just like, oh, oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, no. So that happened. But also that's only how they defeat it the first time. Right. They didn't so then it was all kind of in vain it. because 27 years later he just comes back and yeah. it comes back to wreak havoc. And then her rapist, abusive husband mm -hmm. is now chasing, chasing after yeah. all of them to murder them all, including yeah. her. Oh great. my God. It's not Stephen great. King, what? It's called cocaine. And you don't want no part of this shit. Cocaine? Lots of it. Oh boy. All of it. All Ooh. of the cocaine. Oh, Avril. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say that's a book that doesn't need to get unfilmable. <laughs> that's where I wrote it's Turtle Ten. It's Turtle Ten. Turtle. Gobble gobble. <laughs> I like that. Look. I mean, I, I like that. I'm into it. We should definitely retro review that movie at some point. Geely? Yes. <laughs> There's also another plot that's going on okay. where. I forget his name. Mm -hmm. Bauer, I want to say. Not sure. So the asshole from the first movie that's the bully. Oh, okay. Sort of gets lost in, at the end of the movie, gets like, he goes down in the sewers with them or something, gets lost. We don't know what happens to him at the end mm -hmm. of the movie. So in this movie. Oh, I see. He's a child. He's a child. Sorry. A whole thing happens. He gets put in a mental institution for murdering someone. It's a whole thing. So. He's in a mental institution, he's an adult. This was pretty good actually. He's looking out like a barred window or whatever and there's just like a red balloon. He's like in one flip the cuckoo's nest. Like it's like everyone's sure. crazy about him. And he's like, he's back, oh my God, he's here. I've got to do it. And it's like he's being- um, Summoned. Summoned essentially. And he's, you know, when he moves the balloon moves. And this was all good, you know? He's like walking around and, and he starts to go mad and he makes the whole room. Everyone's going, yeah, I'm yeah, crazy too, oh my God. And he's like, the balloon. And it's following him as they're dragging him back to his room and the balloon's like, here I am, I'm in the window. And you're like, oh, that, well, that's creepy, that's creepy, what's that going on? And then there's like a, oh, something's under his bed. Oh, it's spooky, it was scary, oh, is it gonna be something? It's like a giant stupid looking CGI zombie thing that's like, ah, And then the zombie says, get away, driver. We <laughs> No. Now it just sounds like an episode of Scooby-Doo or something. It like, it like turns into like the American Werewolf in London at some point. But again, forgotten. Like apparently, again, I'm sorry. Apparently in the book, that character is also hunting them down because he's crazy psycho and he's really scary because he's mentally unstable now, and he's murdered Now, was Bev's people. husband from no, Derry? So not, he's just crazy Not because. to my understanding. Okay. So he's like, I'm gonna get them, bud. And there's literally a shot of like zombie in the driver's seat, like, ha ha, driving away. And is the zombie not Pennywise? No, it's no, it's not like re it's. I, I feel like it's someone he murdered, or it's like a body of somebody who I forget. But he does he act as his getaway driver. But then that's sort of forgot. Oh man, I mean, I'm telling you, you would have hated, hated it. Hated it. Hated that's it. The, hated it. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. No, I mean, that's why the tone is so weird. Like, at a certain point, I was like, am I watching Evil Dead? Like, what? it's like gross out, zombies, talk, you know, being crazy. The, like, it becomes kind of campy, but not in a good way at some point. Like, I literally wrote down, zombie getaway driver? That happened. What's going on? What's going on? I'm thinking maybe I'd like to try me some of that cocaine. Too much cocaine. That's too, too. <laughs> it almost felt like, um, like the Avengers. Like, oh no. We have too many characters. Right, we have to split they them up. They all have to have side missions and... We all have to go get the... Talisman the, the, the stones the and Infinity, come back the together. The MacGuffin, you know, yeah. at least in Avengers it's like, we, we paired them together. There's sure. Two people on that team. Yeah. So it's like less of just an this sure. and this. And everyone has a different mission that's... Or a, a different task. That's slightly different that isn't yeah. the exact same scene over and over. So James McAvoy has his flashback scene. And this is where we get Stephen King's cameo. Oh boy. He goes to not the needful things uh, thrift shop. Doesn't matter. Um, there's like a book, the Stephen King book, that's like needful things, and it's like this Faust sort of like the debt. He gives you whatever you need, but then is it really what you wanted? Mm -hmm. You know, um, <laughs> it's yeah. sort of like that. Now, have you watched the Stephen King show? Uh, the Hulu, what the Castle? Oh, Castle Rock. Yeah. I heard it was not good, so I didn't. Okay. And I didn't watch um, Eleven. 2362 
Um, because you read the book. I read the book, but which James was actually Franco. great, but James Franco was in it, so I was like, I had to pass. Is that a Stephen King thing? Yes. Gotcha. But that was really good. Cool, the book. And that was also like, I'm gonna say 700 pages or oh something. Oh god, he just loves to write. So he shows up at the Needful Things shop, right. and he sees his bike outside, and we get a like nonsense cameo from Stephen King, and they talk about, oh, you can never get the ending right, eh? you know? Uh, they make like a meta joke about Oh, because everyone... he's the... Because oh, everyone always complains about Stephen King's endings. Oh. So that was like an in-joke, but they like use it a little too much. I don't think I know many Stephen King novels or books. I know, I've seen Misery. You I've... have? Yes. Oh. I like, I mean, Cat Bates. It's great. Uh, but I've it doesn't Shawshank. have a galactic turtle. <laughs> it doesn't have a galactic turtle. I know. You've seen Stand By Me. Yes. That's based on a short story. Oh. You haven't seen Carrie, I'm sure. No. Or Christine. No. Maximum Overdrive. <laughs> no. I mean, that one is okay. actually very bad and it, stupid and it I love it. It looks terrible. The cars come alive. Imagine your worst nightmare. Machines take over the world. That this one was, I believe, directed by Stephen King, and he's on record as saying he has no memory of large portions of time when he was directing it because of cocaine. I think that's on record. Just wrote to James McAvoy yelling at this child again. Oh my god. Tell me you understand! Stop going to get her! Ah! Yeah. I think that might have been in the trailer. We haven't really talked about the acting. It, it wavers between bad and fine. I would say the opening scene was great. Mm. Uh, wait, so what was James McAvoy's talisman? Well, so and... now this is what's weird. Okay. It's his bike. Oh, okay, that Stephen King was like, hey. But, so then he's like riding his bike and he's like, I'm free, yeah, riding his bike down there. I'm a kid again. And then he rides by his old house. Okay. Oh, my brother that got killed by that clown. Mm. Fuck. Then he goes to the sewer where he got kidnapped. The brother. Yeah. And then there's a scene where he's like, Pennywise is fucking with him and he's pretending to be his brother and he's like, he's like, you could have saved me, brother. And he's like, and then he goes and he goes and he has his arm like in the gutter and he's like, come on, I'm gonna save you. And it's like just out of reach and you're like, oh, oh, this is so tragically, so oh, there's 500 hands and it's Pennywise and now there's, it was like, it was like Doctor Strange where all those like freaky kaleidoscope hands were like, oh, blah, 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 blah. Sure. and he's like, and he's like getting pulled into the gutter and he's like, no, and then he gets his hand out and it's one of those um paper boats and that was a whole thing from the first, like where you float your, like yeah. a paper boat. And that was the whole thing. That was why the brother got drawn to the... Because his paper boat went, went down, down the, to the gutter. You really feel for this little kid. I, I mean, know, I it's good. But, but, so then he gets that, which doesn't make any sense because it wouldn't still be there and it's stupid. Wait, he like pulls it from the gutter. Yeah. Because Pennywise gave it to him. I guess. I guess you could say he gave them all of them, but like some of them were hidden in places. Right. Left to be found. Sure. And some, some were them... like... Then Paul Bunyan gave Because, like, the arcade... Token. I mean, it's oh, an oh action God, puppet like that, but... In his butt, and he had to... I was gonna say, like, ting, like... <laughs> Denied. Denied. <laughs> Approved. <laughs> so then what happens? They collect all of their things and do right. a seance? Well, so the kid that he yelled at yeah. shows up, oh. and he's like, Get out of fucking dairy, man! Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God! Tell me you understand! And then he has a whole dramatic turn because he's like, I should have saved my brother. So he's like, I'm gonna go and save the kid because mm -hmm. I couldn't save my brother. Mm -hmm. And then this is in the trailer too. There's a whole scene where they're in a hall of mirrors. Oh, right. And the kid is there. And then. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, I, I can't, can't save get him. Through. And Pennywise is behind him. And then I literally had to close my eyes. It was, it was making me. So there's all. They needed like an epilepsy warning. There's all these flashing lights oh, no. and the mirrors, and oh, then no. and Pennywise is like, hey, I'm a creep, and you're like, ooh, that's creepy, and then he just starts hitting his head onto the mirror like 70 times. James McAvoy does? No, Pennywise. Why? To get to the kid that he could have gotten to anyway because he's controlling the mirrors apparently. I don't, I do not know. <laughs> He's like, and then the lights are flashing, and there's mirror. I literally had to stop looking at it. It was making me ill. That sounds really dumb. Yeah, and he looked stupid. Oh, like God. it was like a. Wait, it and it wasn't even like a. We will do the wobble, but they will fall down. Like that might have been like kind of like. 
Like he's just sort of in the background, like, mm, you know, uh, and then he just like taps the glass, <gasps> and then it just shatters, shatters, and the kid's like, ah, James McAvoy's like, no, I got you, Joey, sure. ah, and then he, and then he weevils, and then he wobbles and just consumes the whole child. I mean, I would say that'd be terrifying. Why are we writing these movies? I swear to God. I mean, we might have to because this but, sounds like garbage. So that kid is. Question mark killed, kidnapped. We don't know. We never see him again. Never see him. And but you also don't see him die. I don't think so. But well, again, you don't I wasn't know because you weren't looking. He may have eaten his head. I don't know. <laughs> I had to look away. Okay. It was making me physically ill. <laughs> That's fair. We've got another talisman. Um, the kid that used to be overweight that is now. They're all like. Oh. Oh, it's skinny mini. Mm, ben, oh hey, you're hot now. He goes back to the classroom and young, this is another flashback, young Bev shows up again. It's, oh, what's going on? This is, this movie. oh, her head is on fire like the ghost rider. And I laughed again. Your hair is like fire. It looks bad. And she's like, ha <laughs> I'm confused. She's like, the vil I don't know. There's like a figment, it's like a fake yeah. her that's on fire. Yeah. And that's his fear was that. She's like. Did he have a crush on her yeah, in school? Yeah, he's the one that wrote the poem in uh, real life. They've loved each other, I guess. He's loved her forever. Right. She doesn't remember that it's him. Except At some for point, he, she thinks it's James McAvoy. When he had sex with her. <laughs> in the book, right? I mean, bye, 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 bye. Okay. That so, is yeah. so upsetting. It's. It's so incredibly upsetting. So wait now, is this the adult in the scene or is it the child? It's kind of back and forth. Oh, I hate that. <laughs> okay, so we're at the last one, I swear Oh my god. god, how many are there? Six! Swear to God, it's the last one, but it also I need it. to mention it. I okay. need to mention it. Okay. So, it's Fuss Budget Kid, who's a hypochondriac, who's like, oh I always think something's wrong with me. His mom is really overbearing and overweight, and it's a whole common theme. He's married a woman that's the same. Okay. He always had to take care of her. He goes to the pharmacy. Everyone's kind of, it's weird and creepy, and I'm going to get, you know, oh, you might need a pill for that. It's like kind of like making him all paranoid, right? Sure. Th then he goes down to the basement, because why not? Um, of the pharmacy? It doesn't matter. It's cre it's a creep, it's a creep a dungeon. Of and there's, course. Oh, no, and it's spooky, and there's weird lighting, and... I'm going to keep going and he keeps hearing, oh god, what was his name? Eddie! Eddie, help me! Michael! Percy! It's not Percy. Um, Emilio! <laughs> Emilio! Yeah, that's, that's his name now. Emilio! Emilio! <laughs> Come and help me! Oh my gosh! It's his mom. Oh no. His mother is tied up in some sort of dentist chair with like, like arm strap, it's like she's Frankenstein or something, you know, it's like okay. a put straps across it or whatever. And like a little shop of horrors? Well, just that she's in this weird, and there's like straps across her, really. Okay. But sure. It's not actually dentistry. Maybe it is. That would have been creepy. I mean, that's... A fear. For but a lot no, of it had to be like, a oh, boogie, a boogie. So anyway, so, uh, come and help me. Save me, Emilio. Oh my god. Emilio! <laughs> Gets in there. Oh my gosh, Mom, I have to save you. And there's like a creepy thing under a blanket over in the corner. <laughs> and you go, oh, that was kind of spooky. Again. I think you know where this is going. Oh, that was kind of spooky. What's that? Oh, it's on a chain? <gasps> what would they tie up? Oh, this is so scary. But then it's just like a really stupid looking CGI zombie that's like, I'm More baby. zombies? It must be the same zombie from the getaway driver zombie. <laughs> the fact that there's- Now, the... I would watch the shit out of a movie called oh, getaway, getaway Driver, driver zombie. zombie. It's like Baby Driver, but he's a zombie. Fuck yeah, that's zombie a, driver. That is a sci-fi original movie right there. And he's trying to get her out and he can't get her out. Oh my god, and he runs away, you know, uh, from his mother, and sacrifices, I mean essentially sacrifices her to a zombie. Ah! Now this was what was really weird and why I'm telling you this part of the story, because it was certainly not as funny as flames all over my head. Flames Ghost Rider. On the side of my face. On the side of my face. Or Paul Bunyan, the side of my face, Paul Bunyan. Not as funny as that. So he's he's all uh, hypochondriac, oh my gosh, and the zombie's kind of pinning him against a wall and he's like, oh no, no. Germs, and, um, and then the zombie like vomits like black goo on him. More and, black goo. And it's like, you know, it's like a, a project, like, yeah, like a sure. projectile. And then inexplicably, 
uh, they play, I don't know, 10 seconds of just call me angel in the morning, baby. baby. That's it. Was that like a callback? Nope. It was... Not that I remember. Did Ooh. they play that in the first one? I don't know. There was nothing... But like, there was no significance <laughs> or a flashback? I don't know. I genuinely don't know. Maybe that was like the song that his mom used to sing to him? Maybe it's in the book. Maybe. <laughs> A decision in post, like, like it was like they wanted to make it a joke. Right, like, just, isn't it hilarious? That just coming. It was that. It was a comedy beat. It was he, he's a hypochondriac and this zombie's vomiting on him. Like that was what it felt like. That's weird. It was so fucking weird. But what, what does that mean? I don't know. Do you know? Is it in the book? Did you finish the book? Bravo. So quick commercial break. <laughs> We'll be back with more clowns. We'll be back with more clowning. <laughs>
rip off of the thing and I was like, fuck you movie, fuck you. Wait, I thought the thing was the movie that takes place in the Arctic? Yeah, it is. Oh. But there's creepy... I thought they turned it into dogs. Dogs get infected by the thing. Right. And they turn into sort of like tumorous amalgamations of like, it's terrifying, but it's all these different beings and creatures of, it's scientific. It's sort of like, oh, you didn't see Annihilation. But anyway, it's sort oh, of like- Oh, right. But like, I have seen The Thing. You've seen The Thing? I have. It's so good. It was good, but I don't remember creepy so spider like, legs. They're um, trying to start that guy's heart, right? And right. then the, the, the paddles go through and it turns into a mouth and then his head drapes down the side of the table and it's like strings on it. And then it's backlit and it's a shadow and there's a head and then like creepy antennas and like creepy spider legs. And then the spider's like, da -da -da -da. you gotta be fucking kidding me. And in that movie, you're like, I mean, right? Shit. And in this movie, I was like, fuck you. <laughs> Can't just be ripping off other horns. Sure. Like, straight up Maybe I only the saw shot part and the, the dialogue. Thing. Just straight up ripping off the thing. Not oh, that oh, was a cheeky homage. No, didn't care for it. No, sure, that's fair. But also maybe I only saw part of it. Because I don't really remember. Fair enough. You may have turned it off because it's scary. I might have been like, no, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. Bye. <laughs> I have to go to the bathroom, I'll be back. <laughs> And then you're like gone for a while at the yeah. slumber party, and then you're like, oh no, did I miss No, this was like recently, it was like three years ago. <laughs> at a tummy ache. Like, oh, I'm in a slumber party in high school. Like, love it. No. Oh, wait, I'll be right back. I just, I'm, I gotta go to the bathroom. And then you go, like, talk to your friend's mom in the kitchen for a while. That would absolutely be me. Yeah, of course it would. I just wrote down, oh my god, we're at the hour mark. There's still another oh, hour at this point. No. Yeah. I looked at my watch so many times and I said, how is it possible that there's an entire film left? What the fuck is going on? Because at this point, all we've done is had a really creepy, great opening, introduced seven characters. Had and flashbacks, that's the exact same scene of six different characters. I mean, oh my god. Okay, we're not going to talk about this movie that long. I'm wrapping it up. Oh yeah, no, we're, we're, we're at the end, except it's 45 minutes. Wait, okay, so this was the two hour mark or the one hour mark? There was an hour left. I see this what you point mean. Oh when my god. I looked at my watch for the fourth time. Oh jeez, you're like, it's been an hour and 50 minutes of this two hour and 50 minute movie. Yeah. Will this ever end? Most please? of my notes, I mean, I'll just, I mean, we can get into it. Most of my notes are, please make it stop. <laughs> this is endless. It's like a friend who won't let you off the phone. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you wrote that. <laughs> I need something to do. <laughs> Dear God, it's still going on. Oh, oh no. That's a lot of it. Yeah. No, we're very close though, because the last 45 minutes are nonsense and... and, and, and of okay. course they are. So, they get together. Yep. They all have our talismans. There's uh, like a wooden artifact that looks like a trash can that has all of the etchings in it. And Mike's right. like, this one represents, and you're like, Who cares? this doesn't matter. They all throw their talismans in to the trash can. They set them on fire. Great. Oh, now we gotta go into the other dimension. I guess is the dimension? Or the place. It's a place. I'm not really sure. It's a different... <laughs> the creepy spooky house or this is different? They have... Oh yeah, they've gone into the creepy spooky house. Oh right, because... Okay, so... I'm sorry, but James McAvoy is like, I'm going to defeat him by myself. You guys, I've got to protect you because that's like his mm, That's arc. his thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's like, don't follow me. I'm going to the creepy spooky house. I don't know if that actually happens, but he's like, I'm going without you. Click. And then it dead cuts to him in front of the spooky scary house like, all right, bitch, I'm going to get in there. And then they all just show up and they're like, Bill. You can't go by yourself. And I was like, what the fuck was the point of all of this then? Like he doesn't even make it into the house and then he's like, oh, oh no, no, I'm, no, no, I'm no. in over my head. Yeah, and then exactly. They say, like, oh, thank God. You guys. They literally just show up and like, Bill, <laughs> well, you thought you could do this by yourself? So they're in the creepy spooky house and each one of them again has, oh, that's right. Oh. I don't remember when in, in the timeline this happens, but each one of them has like a thing, a real, like, like she's locked in a bathroom stall that's filling with blood and then Ben, is like being buried alive in his clubhouse and like each of them is having like a thing happen to them that's like creepy spooky and it doesn't matter. Because it's not real. Because it's not real. But maybe it is? I don't know. And then Bill, uh, ba Ben, the one that used to be overweight, uh -huh. and Bev call each other and he's like, Bethany, I love you! Ben? Bev, I love you! I'm being buried alive! And she's like, Ben? 
I think you're the one that wrote that poem. Maybe it was James McAvoy. It's not, that's, that's not what happens. But they're like, he's in dirt and she's in blood and they're like reaching for each other through, it's stupid. So anyway, they, yeah, they've lit everything on fire in this wooden trash can. They, I think they go to a dimension, I can't remember. And they're in this sort of, it's not descript, it felt like the end of the Justice League where, remember it was just sort of like, and then they're in a place where the sky is a color. Yes. Like, it's like it didn't feel real in any way. Sure. Which in this it makes a little more sense because it's like his lair, I guess. But it was very much just like, I don't know, I feel like I was in this cave of wonders for 47 hours. I don't know. Like it just wouldn't end. It just wouldn't end. I don't know. It doesn't work. But their balloons show up. It's like a big, they think he's dead, mm -hmm. but then this big balloon shows up and it keeps getting bigger, it keeps getting bigger, and I think it explodes. There's some sort of weird thing in the middle. It's like a, like a giant roller derby course that's in a cave but there's some sort of like thing in the middle that's like spiky rocks i can't really describe it i mean it sounds like you're describing just like a weird nightmare that you had that doesn't really make sense and it's like if you were to tell me all of this i'd be like april it's just a bad dream just go to just, sleep it's fine just let it go it'll be fine just, you, you won't remember they're fighting it or they're gonna try and not be afraid of it it's essentially the same thing that happened in the first one like we're not afraid of you anymore mm. but the big, scary, spooky incarnation of the final it, right? Uh, it could be anything. It, it could be anything, Andrew. Sure. But instead, it is sort of the torso of Pennywise with his clown face, but he's got spider legs and, like, I guess a scorpion tail. Maybe, he, it looks like the Scorpion King. It, it no. Looks, I mean, it's it's better. Like, I mean, that's a that's like a straight up full disaster. Like one that's of the CGI. one of the worst things I've ever seen. This doesn't look that bad, but it is just like a clown torso on a and a weird skeleton spider body, scorpion. and it's like running around this roller. Derby. It's not a roller rig, but it's like circular, like circular and yeah. they're hiding in caves and. Went, and and then what? It went on for so long. I mean, oh I God. I genuinely was like, this is still happening. There's another twenty minutes of running around this cave. The fuss budget, oh, cause he's having like, I'm not brave, like he has a moment where he, he almost lets one of them die because he's too scared. Mm. And then he's like, no, I can do it. Oh right, cause they try to make it, oh, it doesn't matter. I don't even give a fuck, I don't care. It doesn't even fucking matter. He like, is like, I'm gonna do it. And he like stabs it, whatever. It's like, oh no. And you think it might've worked, it didn't. Um, he gets stabbed <gasps> through his stomach by, I guess the scorpion tail. Or is the spider leg, but it's sharp? I don't even know. It doesn't matter. He's like, no, I'm dead. And so then, I'm telling you, man, at this point, I was like, God damn it, get me out of this theater! So he's like, ugh, blah, I'm dead. And then Bill Hader is all like, no, Emilio! It's not his name, I don't know, I don't remember. It didn't matter. Emilio! I mean, it, I guess it did if you care, but I didn't. So he's like, no! And he's like, we gotta, I don't know, he's dying. And then, um... But like, for real? Yeah. Okay. Fuck. We don't know yet, but yes, he dies. Wow. I don't know. It feels like they were running away from this clown spider for a while. I mean, it's just the facts. It is just... Jessica Chastain <laughs> was running from a clown spider for upwards of 15 to 20 minutes. <laughs> and there's like lightning. Oh, it it feels like... I, oh, it was a nightmare. God. Oh, my God. I mean, I, this movie was... A nightmare, but in no way scary. Right. <laughs> Except for the opening scene, sure. which I will attest was terrifying and very well done. Bill Hader, I don't know, hits it or something, and oh, it's this big dramatic moment, and he throws something at it or hits it or stabs it, I can't remember, but he attacks it, and then he calls Pennywise a sloppy bitch. <laughs> You're a sloppy bitch! Yeah, that's right! Let's dance! Hippie Kaye, motherfucker! That happened, too. No, you killed my friend, you sloppy bitch! Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, if I didn't know any better, I would say you were just making all this shit up. It feels like I'm making it up, doesn't it? Oh, and then he says, yippee ki -yay! No! Yeah. I don't know, I didn't write down the motherfucker part, but I did write, Bill Hader just called Pennywise a sloppy bitch, yippee ki -yay. Question mark? <laughs> yippee ki -yay, mother But he did call him a sloppy bitch, which That's, totally seemed wrong. It does. Also, his friend just died. Also, your friend just died. Then there's a spider clown. <laughs> you just imagine, like... I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, because okay, so in the end of the book uh -huh. and in the miniseries, uh -huh. it turns into a giant spider. 
<laughs> the last shred of dignity, folks. Oh. That's its final incarnation. Okay. And they defeat it, I believe, with a slingshot and a rock and a hope and a prayer. This David and Goliath nonsense. Yeah. Oh my god. I mean, it's a little better than Sloppy Bitch. Well, sure. As Bill Skarsgård's like, ah, ah. Skarsgård's in it? Bill Skarsgård. Really? Is Pennywise. And he keeps oh, being right, like. Right, 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 right. He keeps being like, ah, I don't know. He says stuff. But it's like a clown and there's spider legs. Time to float. The best scene with him, mm -hmm. I don't remember, dear God, when it was. At some point in some fantasy or something, I don't know, there's a scene where it's just Bill Skarsgård, but he's got like old fucked up makeup on, but it's like a human. Mm -hmm. And he, he kind of turns and he's like telling a story to Bev. And he's like, you see Bev, the scariest things are, and he's like putting his clown makeup on. And it was like, this is fucking creepy. And then he runs his hands down his face and it like oh, cuts those lines the, yeah, that are like, yeah. and he starts to bleed. And it was like, ooh, that's really, booga, booga, blah, I'm a clown. And it was stupid. But before that, <laughs> it was good. there was so many times in this movie where I just went, <laughs> 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 They all decide again, yes, oh, we have to not be afraid of it. So they all start banding together. They're like, you don't even matter. We don't even like you anymore. Like they turn into bullies to uh, defeat him, which I really didn't appreciate. Sure. Um, and they keep calling him a clown. Well, he's a clown, but he's a clown spider. But they're, but they're like, you're just a clown. Like as, like as in like, you're silly. You don't right. matter. But right. they, then they just start going clown, clown. 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 Stop it. Clown! Stop it! Clown! Clown! And then he keeps shrinking. Like, no! No! Oh my god, this is so bad! A clown. It's like, oh, what a world! What a world! Like, it's, it's, I mean, he doesn't say that. I mean, maybe at this point, why not? Just throw it in there. But he's like, nah. and they're like, clown! You're a clown! Clown! And he's shrinking and he's shrinking and he's getting weaker and weaker and he's becoming. Like, I don't know, the emperor or something. <laughs> and they just keep chanting clown at him, and then I think he just sort of like poofs and goes into himself, and they win. For 27 years or forever? <laughs> Seemingly forever, although I don't know what was different this time than last time. I guess last time he fell down a well. Sure. And this he time, just disappeared into the He well. like poofed into himself. This sounds. Like, pure garbage. No, I genuinely was like, oh, Andrew would have left. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, you would have... I was fascinated by the disaster of it on some level because it, just like filmically, oh, it's, like a, it's like nonsense. <laughs> oh, do you want an example of what not to do, how not to pace a film, how, like, don't introduce characters that you then don't develop in any way? Like, characters are literally like, remember when they were kids and you liked them? This is their job now. <laughs> That was it. Clown. 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 You clown. clown. Get out of here, clown. Oh, laughing, hysterical. <laughs> Just laughing. What is this? Nonsense. So yes, Emilio <laughs> has died. Oh, sad. Oh, and because the, now the, the... Everything falls apart. The, the, the dream the sequence. The dimension is... Yeah. I don't know, whatever. And so they have to leave not Emilio's body. Mm. And Bill Hader's really upset. Sure. Because he loved him. Oh. I guess. It's, it's like there, but not really in any intelligible way. Gotcha. Be who you want to be. Be proud. And they escape through the caves. Whew, made it out of that one. And then they go um, jump into a quarry and wash off all, their, all the blood and everything. Because I think they did that in the first one. Oh. Hard pass. <laughs> Hard pass. So then, okay, so one, I swear to God, uh -huh, uh -huh. one more thing to tell you. Okay. Okay, so... They've all moved on. Great, we killed that clown. Oh, there's all these weird checking in, checking back in, right? Ben and Bev, they cut to them on a yacht. Oh. And there's like a bunch of geese behind them. And it's very much like, huh, we're yacht people now. <laughs> um, that's weird. Yeah, because um, we never see her husband. I guess she got a divorce. And as a fragile person that was in a very traumatic 
a childhood situation and adult situation, like, I don't know, maybe, like, don't get into a relationship so fast, Beth. But he has a boat, so I guess it's fine. Sure. We find out that Stanley, who killed himself, mm -hmm. has, this isn't in the book, has written them a letter. Oh, God. Each of them a letter. Uh -huh. And then they, they read it out loud, and the letter essentially says, well, I was the weakest of you, and I knew I couldn't stand up to it, and I knew we had to do it all together. If we didn't, if we weren't all together, it wouldn't work. So I killed myself. You're welcome. If all of us alive weren't united, I knew we'd all die. So I made the only logical move. I took myself off the board. I killed myself so you could survive because I'm too weak to right. face this fear. Right. Didn't appreciate the messaging. Oh, no, totally. I killed myself for you. Right. It's fine. It's not in the book, and I was just like... Well, that is weird. No. No, that is very weird then, yeah. It's fine. Again, don't add shit to an 800-page book. Don't add, just subtract. Yeah. Don't add, just subtract. And then it, it's like James McAvoy in this study, and I was like, this looks an awful lot like Stand By Me. Turns out it's the exact same room from the end of Stand By Me where Richard Dreyfuss is writing the end of his novel. Wow. Who has friends like you do when you're 12? Jesus, does anybody? And he starts to type his new novel, and it's like a... Stand by me, homage, and then I think it ended at that point. I couldn't tell you, but I think it ended at that point. So now, like, is the town not evil anymore, or? I'm so sorry. Apparently, in the book, the town gets washed away by the huge storm of it. Like, there's a flood or something happens. I don't know. Just call me Angel. Oh my <laughs> God. I hate everything about this. Yes, yeah, I felt like you had to feel some of the pain that I went through. I don't have any love for it, so sure. there are maybe people that, I don't know how you could like it if you read the book, honestly. As like, a film. Yeah. If you liked it, I mean, power to you, but like, I just genuinely like, don't know who this is for other than teenagers, but dear God, it's almost three hours, why would you go, like, this isn't a good date movie. No. Anthony, I love you! I don't think. No, you don't want your date to ever feel like, Jesus Christ, get me out of here. So, I wouldn't recommend it. It was wacky schmacky and very bad and a comedy and a drama. And I think the one we wrote is better. Yeah. So, boy, I mean, I don't know what to say, but spider clown? Spiders. Spider clown. Sodomizing, uh... Paul Bunyan. There, that's what it is, right? Does that, that, that imply that Paul Bunyan is being sodomized? That's what, that's what I thought you... At first I thought you were saying the spider clown was sodomizing Paul Bunyan. And I was like, where is this I mean, gone I now? like it. That would be some shit that was in The Shining. Like, and then you opened the room 1108 and there was a, so, a clown, a spider clown sodomizing Paul Bunyan. I mean, that's fucked up. That's some shit that would be in The Shining. That would be scary. That'd be scary. That'd be scary weird. I don't know. Oof. Fuck this movie. Well, fuck you, alright? Fuck you!